Okay, so we continue studying. This time we'll see a game between uh, two grandmasters, Fresinet against Mace, and we'll continue studying uh, what happens when Black also fianchettos the bishop. And remember, against this move order, we have to play b3 first, just in case. We want to do the double fianchetto and we want to prevent any tricks on this diagonal, so here we play bishop b2, and then here we have the main line. We'll see here what happens after d5, or maybe c5. We know that Kramnik Caruana, we know this game, uh, we saw this game in the introduction, when black plays c5 and he tries playing d5, d4, castling is an option, but then we have to play the Benoni setup, therefore we can play c4 first here, instead of castling we play c4, we prevent black from playing d5 and d4, and then we castle. Just uh, to refresh that line, here we can just take. If queen takes, we basically win a tempo. We also have the bishop here, so taking with the, the, the queen is risky. And if knight takes, we can just take, and then move like queen c1 is annoying. If b6, we have pressure on this diagonal and we plan on playing d4 maybe in the future we can also consider playing e4 and queen b2 check we also got rid of his best defender which was that bishop so we prefer this move order in this game After this, black plays d5, and this is a bit tricky as well, because if we castle then he plays c5, and after c4 then once more we have the Venoni. So here once uh, he plays d5, I recommend playing c4. After uh, playing this, we definitely stop the Benoni. I mean, if c5, we just take, and otherwise, we can consider taking on d5, or maybe we, we play d3. But we basically stop the Benoni, so we play c4 first, then black plays uh, the Slav on structure. This makes a lot of sense because he's also playing against our bishop. And here, when black plays um, d5, c6, I like playing uh, d3. And in the future, I'll consider playing knight d2 plus e4. Playing d4 is also an option, but uh, we don't want to blockade our uh, bishop b2. So we play d3 first. We can also castle and then we play d3. But here we see a little advantage, a plus from playing d3 first. Now we can play knight bd2 and we connect our knights. What I would like to say about this position is Usually when black plays uh, c6, d5, sometimes e6, or as you can see this uh, pawn structure, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, but usually as black we have problems with bishop c8. As you can see, this bishop is not a great bishop. It is crashing into the pawn structure, so black tries 
uh, trading this bishop off. And this makes a lot of sense because let us say he plays knight to e7 or even e6. This bishop is lacking space even if he tries b6 and bishop b7. Well, he can try something like this, but in a lot of defenses like Karo Khan, French, the Orthodox, Queen's Gambit declined, Bishop c8 has a tough time finding good squares. So it makes a lot of sense if black wants to trade it off. Here, knight pd7, we castle. See our structure, it's quite easy to understand and to remember. All our pieces are well placed. And here, black tries a5. Well, here in the database, you'll find another game where black tries rook e8. Then, I like this move, of course. Black wants to take, but we also want to uh, get the bishop pair, so we don't mind playing this. And in fact, if black opens that position like this, this is awesome for us. Because, well, you can see our two bishops. If he plays something like d4, then this bishop is too powerful. And if he plays e4, suddenly this bishop is powerful so we don't mind playing this the more we open the better for us so let us say he plays queen b6 here after a single a single what i mean is after an easy move like e3 we have a nice advantage again if he advances our bishops are going to be stronger. So, if I'm playing black and I decide to take on f3, maybe I would try closing that position instead of instead of playing e5. So, yeah, rook e8 is an option. But this is a well-known idea as well. When he plays a5, of course he's trying to play a4 and maybe a3. Winning and gaining a lot of space on the queen side. So when he plays a5, we'll respond with a3. First of all, if he goes a4, apart from taking... We can also consider playing b4. And this a4 pawn in some endgames will be a weakness. And when we play a3, we also stop him from advancing a lot. So I really like this move. And of course, sometimes we can also consider playing b4, b5. After all, we can play on both sides of the board, and as we always point out, our advantage is also on the queen side. So, a3 is a good move. Here, a black plays rook e8, and here, white plays a weird move. Well, it's not weird, but it's not that common in this position. White plays knight to e5, trading some pieces off. I would play h3. I mean, this bishop is too important, so I want to get it. And here, I would try playing with the bishop pair. We saw a similar position already. And we probably have a slight advantage here as white. And the thing is, well, if 
this. Of course, we play this and we trap his bishop. And bishop f5. Well, here, well, this is an easy move. Because then I attack. I also stop bishop e6. I mean, he can play it, but of course we take. And this is too weak. I also imagine h4, bishop h3. And even if knight d4 wasn't possible, I can go for something like rook e1 plus e4, or even queen e1 plus e4. As we'll see later in this uh, series, you'll see that queen e1. I'm sorry, I have some. I'm having some issues with these arrows. Okay, yeah, you'll see that queen e1 is a useful move when we play the king's Indian attack as white. So that's something to remember. So h3, it's it's the move. And of course, if bishop e6, we still have knight d4. Maybe we don't break his pawn structure, but as usual, the bishop pair is giving us the advantage. So let's go back to that position where he plays a5, a3, and then rook e8. Well, white plays knight e5. The main idea, I think, is stopping black from playing e5 himself. So here, okay, he takes as black. He's probably happy to trade some pieces off. And then queen d7. Yeah, I like queen d7 because this uh, loses a pawn. Yeah, d5 is hanging, so... Queen d7, we can feel bishop h3 is coming, but okay, I mean, there's not much we can do about it. I mean, if we play rook e1, it looks a bit passive. I mean, even if we manage to do this, we are moving all our pieces back, so here... I prefer improving my pieces, trying to get some play on the queen side. I don't see much for us on the king side, so I like this move. I would also love moving my queen, but the problem is the e2 pawn is hanging, so this move looks necessary. And here, I think this is... Not a mistake, but I think black can play even better. I mean, he can improve with bishop h3, maybe queen f5. I mean, he's creating some threats. a4 is basically helping us open the queen side. So, not a mistake, but I think here white can exploit this uh, little in accuracy by playing rook b1. Now if he takes, we just take with the queen and b7 is under pressure. Or maybe after rook b1 we can also play b4 and b5 and suddenly we open the queen side. So now black decides to play bishop h3. Let's see what happens if he takes. Then, if I follow the general concept, I would take with the queen. I mean, winning a tempo, attacking there. And despite having weak pawns, look at that position. Our bishop is powerful, not to mention bishop e5. Okay, let me fix these arrows. I don't know what's going on, what's going on with the arrows, but I can't handle them. Okay, and yeah, rook d1 as well. I mean, maybe if you analyze this with that computer, you'll find 
it's equal, but in practice, that's uh, it's not that easy. I mean, as black, you have to defend, you have to find tough moves, and as white, all we are doing is creating threats. So having the initiative is key. So rook b1, powerful move, bishop h3. And now white is the one who makes a little mistake. Here we have to take advantage of uh, the fact that queen d7 is a bit overloaded, protecting both bishop h3 and b7. So taking on h3 is a good idea. And then we just take on a4. We just win a pawn, and there's no risk, even if he plays knight there. There's no real threat. And everything is hanging. There's no rook b8, because we have a bishop there, and this runs into bishop d4. And this is a tough position for, for black. In fact, I believe he has to play something like queen d7 and then he's given up uh, on the king side ideas and as white we have a clear advantage in my opinion extra pawn uh, chances of uh, doubling up on the b file so bishop h3 this is a little mistake by white however the position's nature has not changed. We still have some play on the queen side, and this is a move we saw already when the king is there. Queen is controlling the queen side, maybe queen b2 check, and then b7 is hanging. This becomes a threat. I like it. And here, black decides to take. Yeah. Well, I think he has to, because otherwise, apart from taking on a4, I might consider this too. And this pawn on a4 is not doing much. What is more, this rook a8 is now passive. Well, if he takes, somehow rook a8 is also playing. And then rook a7. Feels like a good move. Protecting b7 and preparing to double up on the a file. The other option was playing b5. And yeah, this is this looks risky for black too. And this looks like a computer variation, to be honest. Because now after queen e6, yeah, rook b3 is hanging, this knight is hanging. We have some tricks. So yeah, a move like b5 is creating weaknesses. On the other hand, black is getting rid of his weakness on b7, so maybe e4. And yeah, we have a complicated position. Given the chance, I would still take white because of uh, the c6 weakness. But okay, this is supposed to be uh, the best defense for black. Rook a7. Here, white plays queen b2. There's a quote that says uh, the threat is stronger than its execution. I mean, here we can just keep queen b2 check for. A better position let us say we play e4 then if he goes knight c7 then queen b2 becomes stronger because now b7 is hanging so maybe e4 was a better try and now we have a pin we also have some pressure on the queen side maybe as we said before this is maybe equal but it's not that easy in real practice. As black, you have to defend 
everything is pinned, the b7 pawn is suffering, and not to mention we have a better center. So, from the practice point of view, we are still ahead. e4 was a nice way of uh, punishing this rook a7. Queen b2 check, now black, okay, he's weakening his king a bit, but uh, we don't have those check uh, tricks anymore. White plays rook c1, and here, of course, we have to be careful. This looks like a winning move, because if knight c7, then rook takes b7. However, knight f4, and we might be dead here. I mean, yeah, if we take. If we don't take, then queen h3 anyway. Yeah, if this queen h3. We might transpose, so takes queen g4 king he has at least a perpetual check and probably more he can also take there of course uh, we don't want to play this we play rook c1 we make sure all our pieces are playing on the queen side and just in case h3 well looks like a waiting move but in some variations, he might try queen here plus knight f4. I mean, we are also protecting our king. In fact, if we want to play e4, we have to play h3 first, because here he has the same trick again. So, h3. We know e4 is coming next. The idea is easy, we just want to win space and d4. When we have a position like this, we can also consider playing e5, and we have a real reason we want to open his king, but uh, we have to be careful when we advance upon, because then he'll have d5 available again. I mean, I don't feel he's gonna play e5 himself, so there's no rush on playing e5. Let us say I'll play a nonsense move. Uh, he's not gonna play this, because then we play d4, and suddenly the f6 pawn is too weak. I mean, this is what we are looking for. We can wait till he makes a major mistake like this, a major positional mistake. I mean, he's not losing a piece. Wow, I forgot about c6 too. Yeah, this would be ideal for us. So, well, he plays d4. White plays d4. We prepare e5. We also stop e5, which was not a great move by black, but okay. The main thing is we win space, and we might try this. So far, this is a positional battle. We are not trying to win by attacking his king yet. But okay, maybe later this king is much worse than ours. I mean, this king is unprotected, whereas our king is much safer. Rook a4, rook d3. See, we try playing d5, maybe e5. We are not showing our cards yet, and he has to be careful, because d5 or e5, they are coming any time, so... 8, a6. Uh, he's still waiting in a solid position, but he's passive, and we keep on improving, protecting the only weakness in our position, and why not queen c1? doubling up on the c-file, our queen might be able to come to the king side, so... Right now uh, we are analyzing maneuvers, positional maneuvers, and this is uh, the, the kind of chess I enjoy playing. Here, for instance, when we play queen c1, he has to be aware of these threats, maybe h4, h5, 
we open his king and apart from these threats on the king side we'll also consider playing d5 I mean that knight on c7 is unprotected and he plays yeah knight to e8 maybe knight e6 but yeah that knight is in bad shape I mean yeah d5 we have to open that position and here to be honest I like both e takes and rook takes because if I take with the rook the queen has I mean yeah few squares maybe e5 but taking with the pawn is even better because I mean there's no knight c7 no knight c5 suddenly our knight I mean not now because black has queen takes but I believe we'll find a powerful attack here for white yeah knight e8 looks passive but okay uh, now it looks like uh, we we have the right to open that position because now there's no knight d5 and even if he places the queen on d5 we can easily remove the queen from d5 with rook c5 and we keep on attacking queen d7 of course at this point we have to say at the opening battle was very good for us I mean, I think we we got an advantage but of course we'll see the entire game because our goal is to learn some chess too so black takes with the knight looks like an active defense given the chance I would have taken with the pawn I know this looks passive but I control key squares I mean when I take with the knight again black has an active position but e7 is weak I have e5 g5 and white is gonna exploit this soon with maneuvers but we continue the pressure on c6 and at some point I would consider apart from queen here and maybe some knight h4 knight f5 advancing the pawn in some positions is probably a good idea here black tries uh, trading pieces off in order to play an endgame with uh, less pieces but okay we take not much we can do about it and instead of rook takes before he plays rook a1 I guess this runs into this and we are a healthy pawn up and apart from the extra pawn I mean his king much weaker than our king we still have queens on that means we can still considering an attack so here instead of rook takes b4 black goes for an active uh, defense but yeah we if we calculate here we find that rook takes e6 is working queen takes b4 well that position is full of tactics let's say if this of course we take the queen and no matter what rook he takes we take the other rook and we have a, an extra pawn or two extra pawns wow okay and after this same this should be a clear win for white so okay rook takes c1 we just take on d6 um, in the game black played queen takes b4 but maybe the main the main defense should be rook takes e6 of course now rook takes uh, runs into this and this time we are losing as white we are down an entire rook but after rook takes c6 well we have queen takes a1 
takes, queen takes. Now we have two extra pawns, but after knight d5, he gets a pawn back. Well, there's still a lot of room for black to suffer in this endgame, but okay, maybe being just a single pawn down, maybe he has some drawing chances. And he'll have the chance of trading queens off too, and that makes uh, his drawing chances higher. But okay, even in that variation as white, we can play, we can play on forever and try to win. So, rook a1, active defense, rook takes. This is the last mistake, probably, as we pointed out. After rook takes c6, black still has some drawing chances. And okay, rook takes a6. Well, white uh, doesn't mind playing with two rooks against the queen. This move is also good enough because this is. Uh, we saw this a similar variation where we keep the queen and this king is just too weak. Rook e6, rook c7. And yeah, we have a lot of variations. Yeah, and there's no, no room for queen b1 or anything like that because we just take on e7 with check. Yeah, should be easy. So queen e3 was winning as well. Uh, white plays, rook takes a6. Okay, yeah, we get the same end game. Yeah, this should be absolutely losing for black. No counter play, we just double up on the e file. We still have the extra pawn. Should be easy to convert our material advantage. I like rookie 3. Super solid uh, moves by white, not allowing any counter play. And. Yeah, queen c5. Okay. Trading queens off. And the thing is, even if. I mean, we trade queens off. Problem is, if this pawn was an f7, then black has good drawing chances, but here he's full of weaknesses. I mean, his king side is too weak. So that's why I, I feel white played queen c5. Not to mention rook takes e7 is a threat. If we are not playing queen c5, maybe a move like this. Rook e5, guarding this, and d5 square, preparing queen e3, queen there. I mean, our pressure is, is powerful, so... Yeah, queen c5 looks like a good technique move. And we are basically forcing him to trade on c5. He plays king f8. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. This... We can basically play knight there, check. And yeah, this king won't have an easy time coming to the center. Not to mention in some variations this might work too, because of course this runs into knight e5 check. So king f8, knight to e5. It's tough to improve the rook as black and the thing is even if he comes to the center which makes a lot of sense by the way we have some mating nets too c5 pawn is crushing and controlling everything so yeah rook b3 then knight to d7 somehow black wants to trade this powerful knight if this then Instead of rook b8, which is probably winning, we can also play this. Cutting the king and then preparing c6. Zero counterplay here for black. This is uh, the kind of chess we want to play. So knight to d7. And yeah, maybe taking on d7 plus rook b7. We should win this, but... 
White finds a better move. His first rank is too weak. And if we calculate a bit, we find that this move wins. Well, this is forced. And this in-between move is key. Because, yeah, if we play c7, looks like we are winning. But then king d7, there's no check. He just controls c8. Even after rook c6. There's no rook d8 check because king takes c7. So, yeah. Here, rook b8 check first, king there, c7, and okay, yeah, we just promote. Here, and uh, black resigns. This is an easy win. As I said before, if he had a pawn on f7, then his drawing chances are higher, but with this, there's no doubt about the result. So, black uh, didn't bother uh, to defend this after c8. Uh, black resigns very nice game uh, as usual we see a lot of ideas uh, a new idea we find in this game is that after a5 we can easily play a3 remember against the d5 c6 setup we can play a king's indian attack and also remember that and you'll find this in future games the move queen e1 is uh, useful for white too so, as I always tell, I hope uh, you enjoyed this game. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you guys in my future videos. Thank you. Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.